good thing is that the clean energy revolution will be mostly led by private capital, even in the meltdown that we're seeing right now. Uh, the one place that's still strong, where venture capitalists at least are still looking to make big plays, the clean energy sector. The handwriting is on the wall for the uh, carbon-based, oil-based, coal-based energy, uh, outmoded, eight-track tape uh, kind of uh, technologies. People now are going to move to the MP3 solar and, and wind uh, clean energy grid technology. Um, so that's still very strong. The private sector will lead, but the private sector can only do a good job according to the rules the government sets. Uh, I'm all for markets, but markets work according to rules, and the rules are set by the government. Right now, the rules are wacky. If you are a polluter, uh, you can dump all the carbon in the world you want to for free in the air, and you pay zero for doing that. It's going to cost us the whole planet, but it's free to you. That's the biggest market failure in the history of capitalism. Uh, that's got to be corrected. Well, you correct it by either having a cap and trade system. We would say cap, collect, and invest system. So the money you get uh, from people who buy the right to put up carbon, you reinvest in the economy. Um, or you carbon taxes. But you've got to get the, sick, the price signals going so that it's suddenly cheaper to be clean and more expensive to be dirty. Right now, it's cheap to do dirty energy, and it's expensive to do clean energy, in part because the price signals are wrong. So the government, the most important thing the government can do is get the price signals right, to get a carbon deal done that puts a price on carbon, that uh, makes forces polluters to pay, so people will uh, very, and I guarantee you, very quickly, the energy sector in our, our country, the minute that that deal goes through, they're going to come out with a whole uh, hat, magic hat full of technologies that are ready to go the minute they know they can't go on the old way. But we've got to get the price signals right. Well, you know, there's, there are objective and subjective hurdles. Objectively, the polluters spend an awful lot of money uh, engaging with practically legalized bribery of the entire political system. We have a military petroleum complex that runs this country. I call it the Texas to Pentagon axis. It runs right through the Bible Belt where I grew up, where my family uh, still lives that up until now has run the country, I would say, into a ditch. And as a result, uh, we have this incredible addiction to uh, oil overseas as, as, as well as, as, as homegrown oil. Uh, but we spend a tremendous amount of our Pentagon dollars defending and protecting and policing oil supply lines. Why? So we can then spend billions more <laughs> buying the stuff. Well, I would say, you know, a smart thing to do would be to take 10% of the Pentagon budget and use it to retrofit, repower, reboot America clean and green so then we don't have to have uh, uh, military bases all around the world and, and, and guard sea lanes all around the world. Uh, that is the way forward for uh, uh, the U.S. economy. Uh, the, the, the faster we can transition um, to a clean and green set of homegrown solutions for energy, the quicker we can get energy prices down and start growing the, growing the economy again.